Hey everybody, we're here at Fangoria Trinity of Terrors the day after Halloween and we're here with Michael Berryman. Wow. That guy. That, that guy here. Yeah. <laughs> it looks just like him. Right? Sure does. Oh, actually, are you, are you Michael or are you just an impersonator? The secret is still a secret, but I'll spill the beans. I am actually the real Michael Berryman. I am the real Michael Berryman because on my MySpace it says the real Michael Berryman because there was an imposter actually pretending to be me. Can you imagine? And we know that's true because Devaney actually stole his wallet earlier and checked his ID. This is the actual real Michael Berryman. That's true. So, Not the wallet, but the Michael part's true. So um, is it Michael or Mike? Michael. Okay, Michael, got that, guys? All right. So there are, gosh, so many things I want to ask you, and I'm going to try and narrow it down to, to just a couple. All right. um, of all of the projects that you've worked on, what would you say is your most challenging role and why? Okay, uh, the most challenging was probably uh, the Skull Cowboy in, in Crow with Brandon Lee. Uh, for the simple reason I had an acrylic face and jaw bolted over my entire skull and, and head. And it got very, uh, during the day, it, we filmed at night mostly, and Brandon and I uh, both had the same situation, which was, was freezing cold, and we would literally be shaking. And then when we had our blankets taken away for, uh, from us to get ready to start the scene, they would turn on a rain machine and a fan machine and we're looking at everybody wearing snowmobile suits, and we were just, we had to not uh, have convulsions from the cold. So, you know, we just uh, hung in there, and uh, we just had some incredible, incredible uh, experiences. I mean, the story is phenomenal. Uh, being able to have the honor and privilege to work with Brandon Lee was just tremendous. We became very good friends, and uh, he's, he's sorely missed. But... Uh, James O'Barr made a wonderful, wonderful story, and uh, uh, that was probably uh, uh, the most challenging uh, physically. Uh, mentally, uh, um, I'm challenged. His most mentally challenging role is this one right here, being interviewed by Scream Queens <laughs> on Kai. <laughs> wow. Um, so, Devil's Rejects, uh, an amazing film and a disturbing film. Um, I guess my question for you is, as an actor, how do you prepare for a role like that? Well, you know, uh, sometimes uh, I, I have to uh, play a character that might be a, a little short on the uh, IQ. Um, so it, it's okay, you know, eventually uh, there will be the day, you know, when uh, I'm not so bright. Hopefully that'll be a long time from now. But honestly, I, I just... I, I create a mental box in an artistic situation where I have to fill it with the character. I bring the character to life within uh, the, the uh, 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 definition of what my director and my writer want to convey. And I try to bring the character uh, uh, through the experience of the, of the scenes, the action, the interplay with the other characters. So I would say this, uh, my characters are 80, about 85% uh, fully developed, and then I go to work. And then we have rehearsals, and then we say action, and then the, the other 15% uh, comes about through the interaction of my other characters or whatever and whomever is in the scene, for instance. And uh, to me, uh, I guess that's my method, if you have to say, if there is such a thing. Uh, so I let those other elements uh, help uh, you know, finish the coloring book, so to speak. Okay, so basically acting and reacting, yeah. and a lot of other stuff in the middle. Absolutely. Um, I have a question. Yeah. Okay. So my question for you is, why is it better to be a horror actor than any other genre? <laughs> uh, well, uh, I, I, I appreciate comedy, uh, science fiction. Uh, it's mostly storytelling that we do. But as far as the horror genre, I appreciate it so very much because we can uh, not just scare you, we can also, through, uh, through the story and through theme, uh, discuss certain topics that would be taboo or not, uh, you know, uh, not something everybody would want to have to deal with, but we do in real life. So we can take situations from real life, put them in a setting in a horror film where it's, uh, uh, it's represented by uh, uh, allegory. So you can, I think, cause an epiphany or do some healing uh, for your audience to whatever level they're at 
through your story and through something that might not be socially acceptable, for instance. I think horror films are way in advance of uh, society coming to terms with certain realities, depending on your zip code, for instance.